action that uh, where I received the Medal of Honor was uh, over a period of about 56 hours. Uh, it was a battle that um, that lasted uh, during the Tet Offensive, where the enemy had, had infiltrated and over overran the town of uh, Chowduck. And uh, we'd on, we were on a reconnaissance patrol outside of the city when uh, we heard that the city was under attack. And, and uh, there weren't many American troops there, very few. And I happened to be uh, a leader of an indigenous troops of uh, Chinese, Cambodians, and Vietnamese. And uh, just so happens there was a, a Navy SEAL platoon that had come up to Chow Duck uh, to, during the, the, the New Year ceasefire to uh, take a little R&R, I guess. And so I went out on a reconnaissance patrol, uh, planned reconnaissance patrol with my men to see whether or not uh, that the, the enemy was living up to their ceasefire agreement and they volunteered to go along. And uh, needless to say, after that, when we found out that the enemy had taken over the town that we had just left from, uh, we had to fight our way back into town. And uh, my primary concern was the uh, civilians that um, were there, U.S. civilians that were there for um, um, helping out as advisors. And uh, the SEALs, um, were with me, and um, and uh, we fought our way into some of the different locations. And one of the seals was killed in the battle, and uh, in there it wasn't killed right away, or he didn't die right away. I should I probably ought to change that. But one of the seals uh, was wounded mortally, and uh, so the um, the seals were ordered to evacuate him and to leave the center of the city because of um, the uncertainty of it, and it was totally overrun. And I had at that time about um, uh, eight of my indigenous troops uh, that we went back into the city and started uh, uh, taking over little, little pockets. Uh, there were about 600 enemy soldiers. We didn't know at that time, but they were a lot. You could see them even moving around in, in, in uh, organized platoon formations trotting around. And um, so these guys that I had were just just great fighters and, and stuck together. And because it was a, the, the Tet Offensive or the Tet New Year was a, a holiday, a lot of my other troops and other uh, uh, Vietnamese troops were in town, pulled up, uh, during the celebration of uh, Chinese New Year. And then, uh, so when they saw us, uh, they started joining in. So we got up to about 20, and we were able to uh, rescue some civilians, some more civilians, a couple of Filipino civilians that were working for the U.S., um, and, um, and rescue the province chief's uh, wife and family. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, you know, I could go through each step, but it was 56 hours of, uh, of uh, house to house fighting and, uh, and just pretty intense. And someone asked me one time, uh, you know, how, how are you so successful? And well, I had some really good guys and we had more to shoot at than they did. Uh, but uh, as it was, the enemy was able to retreat and uh, we, get, we let them have an avenue to get out because after all we only got up to about 20 and that wasn't enough to uh, to push them out head on with two two enemy battalions the the thing that um, that really changed the battle for us is when we took over the theater and ju well just before I took over the theater I saw this old guy kind of uh, crouched down in a in a uh, like a foxhole uh, that was probably create, uh, built by the locals just for uh, uh, protection during airstrikes or artillery strikes, but he was using it. He didn't look in place at all, so I snatched him up. And as we went into the theater, and there was a hell of a lot of firing going on, and, and I, when I went in there, uh, the ray of light shone across his play, face, and the 
the fire, the shooting stopped just momentarily. And I kind of, I thought then I must have somebody there. They recognized this guy. Uh, so we, we pushed on in there and it, of course the firing started again and I just stuck his, his face up in this ray of light as the door was opening with other guys, the, my men coming through and they all stopped. And my, my men uh, who spoke the language started ordering them to put their weapons down and, and I have never th thought why to this day they actually did that. There was 20 of them in the building uh, we captured uh, 19 of them, and then, of course, we already had the general. It turned out to be a general, and uh, took him back. And you have to realize that that uh, the Tet Offensive was so widespread, nobody knew, though, what was going on. It was all our individual little wars, but we didn't realize that it went from way to further south of where we were. And when I realized that we there was a, a widespread attack, assault, I thought, you know, this, this guy ought to be able to uh, uh, shed some light on what their main objective was. So I called my uh, uh, chain of command and they broke an aircraft loose and landed on the road and we flew him out of there. Um, the project I was in, uh, I was the only American assigned to it, um, but it was directly worked for the Central Intelligence Agency. So I had their assets to come in, and they landed on the road and, and took him out uh, to for interrogation and uh, interview. Uh, a lot of information came out of that. We realized that it was a major offensive that they lost. And um, I tell all veterans, you know, you won that one. And you won the war right there. They just didn't give you the victory. Kind of long. It's it's kind of hard to talk about the battle when when there were so many uh, phases of it. We had these 19 prisoners, and we drove back to our compound. And I'm still not sure who we have. And when I walked in through the the door of our compound, there was a former uh, VC that uh, is now working with us, and uh, he he uh, showed up. I'm not sure where he was, but he went around the corner and he saw him uh, leaning against the wall with his feet stretched out and he looked at me and he couldn't speak much English, but he said, number one VC, Sal Bay. And that's when I knew uh, that we had somebody. You know, um, a Medal of Honor recipient, um, not aware of it that at the time when they receive it, but they've got an obligation. They've got a tremendous burden to carry um, this medal that, that represents all those that uh, they fought with. Uh, many of those may have uh, performed deeds far greater than any of us, that there were no witnesses. So we have that obligation to, uh, to spread the word to uh, others that their uh, sacrifices of all are to build this country and maintain this country to, the way we know it. Um, if you didn't take the Medal of Honor and to use it as a platform to explain to those that don't have to go through war or experience those things, uh, to use that medal to, to, because it is so uh, elevated, it, it, the standards are so high and the criteria just, just can't be um, uh, um, criticized at all for it. Um, that it is a proper message to convey to young people that what we've fought for is worth uh, preserving. And, and so th those of us that have been around the Medal of Honor Society a while realize that uh, this is far greater than this. We only wear it for those others. And we use the Medal of Honor to uh, help send the message to others. And we're very careful that in spite, in spite of what people think, Medal of Honor recipients don't promote war all the time. We, we don't, in fact, that's the least uh, effective way to get things done internationally is maybe only the last resort. But there's other ways to serve and to, to uh, recognize uh, the, the opportunity to do something for your fellow man. 
Um, almost all of us uh, travel around the country and visit schools. The Medal of Honor Foundation has the character development program, wonderful program. Uh, some of us have branched off a little bit. Well, I support that 100%. Have started uh, a nonprofit that is is based on uh, recognizing the sacrifices of all that made this country, not just the military, uh, the Center for American Values. And I feel very good about being able to do that and using the Medal of Honor to get me to, to send that message. Um, if you didn't do that, and you just lived on what you did 40 years ago, and then you, you, you probably wouldn't survive uh, mentally or uh, because it'd just be too much of a burden to, to carry. First of all, uh, not, I don't know if any recipient really feels like they, they deserve the Medal of Honor. I mean, uh, it would just, it just uh, your, the great thing about it is those on the battlefield with you recommend you for it. And, uh, and at the time, you, you probably wonder, well, what did I do that was so great? You know, maybe someone else deserved that. But to, to go all these years, and that was 40 years ago, and, and somehow feel like you really deserve it and they owe you, no, that you could never survive that. You've got to. It's much bigger than any one of us. And so what you're doing and, and what other veterans are doing and reaching out to those other c citizens and explaining to them that this is the greatest country on earth. Uh, be proud of it. And uh, if you are, um, that's what it's going to take to keep us to be the greatest country on earth, the example for others to live by. The Center for American Values um, was founded uh, three years ago, uh, November 11th, um, was the day we opened our doors. And it was the mission uh, to uh, honor the sacrifices of all have made for this country and to ensure those deeds are never forgotten. So three years ago, last November, um, we um, have uh, launched an education program that is uh, geared towards um, all school age, age kids. And it, we're developing an exchange program where kids can come uh, from the rural areas into the center to, to see what we're doing. We, need to, we needed to do things at the center that put a face back on to feelings and taking care of fellow Americans. Because right now I'm afraid that we're kind of getting distanced with this media, social media that we have. While it's, it's a great thing and it's a tool, it's wonderful, but it's taken the personality out of relationships. And so we're embarking on an attempt now to bring that back into personality side, into uh, dealing with your family and your community. Mm -hmm.